Hi, my name is Deborah Reed, and I write young adult realistic fiction under the name D.A. Reed. And all of my stories uh, center around issues that young adults as well as adults deal with every day. Uh, my latest is called Nothing But Gutters and Pocket Change, which centers around the problem of teenage homelessness. And it follows two teenagers, Summer and Midas. Um, I'm going to read a little bit of Midas's story for you uh, today. I was going to get fired. I tried not to think about Ron's face when I emerged from the storage room with two hours left in my shift and told him I had to go home. Family emergency, I said. It could be. I just didn't know for sure. Really, everything about my family was an emergency. The wind picked up, assaulting my face as I sped toward home on my longboard. My cheeks were numb, but that was okay. It kind of matched the rest of me. We're leaving. That was the text. Two words, typed by my mother, who was obviously high or drunk. She may not have graduated high school, but she knew how to spell, unless she'd had too much, which was pretty regular, as in everyday regular. Most people wouldn't have batted an eye at a text like that from their parents. Two words, we're leaving, could mean most anything in a normal family. We're leaving to go get pizza. We're leaving to go to the movies. We're leaving to pick up your sister. But my family wasn't like other families. My parents weren't like other parents. So when the ball of ice formed in my stomach after reading those two horribly spelled words, I followed my instincts. Something wasn't right. I could feel it, and it made me more nervous than I wanted to admit. Dad's truck was running in the driveway, exhaust floating on the cold air and into the gathering dusk. No one was inside, so I barreled through the side door and into the kitchen, then stopped cold. Midas. Mom spoke the words vacantly, her coat clutched to her chest. She looked vaguely surprised to see me. I was impressed she could feel anything at all. She was obviously high as a kite. But I knew that was how Dad liked her, liked both of us. Easier to control when our inhibitions were down. He didn't think I knew, but I did. Well, look who decided to show up. I turned, watched as my father came out of the master bedroom carrying another suitcase in his coat. I tried to feel some emotion, anything, but I just felt numb. My father glared at his wife. I should beat you to within an inch of your life for this. We don't need his whining right now. But I wasn't whining. I couldn't seem to push any words past the tightness closing my throat. Take all this to the truck, Myra. Now. Her gaze directed at the floor. Mom picked up a suitcase in each hand and headed for the door. I finally got one word past my locked throat. Mom? But she ignored me, shuffling toward the door as if I had never spoken, as if I didn't exist. I shifted my eyes back toward my father. We're leaving. Duh. An eviction notice was served. We've lost the house. My father glared as mom shuffled back in to grab more bags. Thanks to your mother's shoddy bookkeeping. More like your need to buy drugs every day. The words were out before I could stop them. The numbness was wearing off and fear mingled with anger in my chest. I knew it was my father's fault, not my mother's. Everything was my father's fault. Why couldn't Dad have taken off, left us on our own like so many other men did to their families? We would have been so much better off. My father's hand connected hard with my jaw, snapping my head to the side as pain exploded in my head. I stumbled, one hand lifting toward my face, then hovering in the air as I refused to allow weakness to show in front of my father. You need to learn some respect, boy. My mom was back, her face as vacant as before despite the red handprint now decorating my face. I looked at her, willing my mother to meet my gaze, feeling hatred build in my chest for the woman who refused to do anything but cower and wallow at the feet of the man who abused us both. So where are we going? I kept my gaze on my mother, my hand dropped fully back to my side. My jaw felt like it was on fire. A smirk crossed my father's face. Your mother and I are going to her sister's place in Pennsylvania. Silence fell, my father looking expectantly at me. I stared back, the words circling my brain, refusing to take hold. Then they did. What about me? My gaze flicked between my parents, willing my mother to look up, to do something. What am I supposed to do? Time for you to figure that out, son. You're almost 18. Far as I'm concerned, we're not responsible for you anymore. My father shifted his grip on his jacket and headed for the door, a parting shot delivered over his shoulder. Time for you to learn how to be a man. I stared in disbelief as my father strode out the door, my mother following behind, head bent, 
refusing to look at me. Thank you for listening. If you would like to learn more about Summer and Midas' story, you can find all of my books on my website, dareadauthor.com. Welcome back to the 2020 Virtual Author Fair. It's our second annual. My name is Michael Dwyer from Rochester Writers, and we're being hosted by the Rochester Hills Public Library. Joining us this segment is author D.A. Reed. Hey, Deborah, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us for the Author Fair this year. And uh, we just got done listening to you read a portion of Nothing But Gutters and Pocket Change. It's your most recent uh, young adult novel, and it uh, tackles uh, the, 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 the subject of teenage homelessness. Tell us about that. Uh, actually, it was a subject that I didn't even really knew existed as much as it does. I was looking for a new topic um, for my young adult novel, and I had a friend who suggested that I write on teenage homelessness, and I kind of brushed it off a little bit because I was like, well, that's not really a thing. And then someone heard her say that and turned around and said, yeah, it's a really big issue in the area where I live. And I said, oh, so this is a really um, prominent thing that's happening. And the more I talked to people about it, the more I realized that there is a lot of teenage homelessness out there. And the fact that I didn't realize that it was as prominent as it is really bothered me. And so like this book is not only to... Um, give awareness to this problem, to this issue, and to maybe hopefully um, show some ways that we can help other people who are in that situation, whether they're teenagers or not. Um, so it was kind of written for entertainment, but also to bring awareness to it and um, really to kind of maybe help some kids who might pick it up, who might possibly be in that situation uh, maybe find some hope and find some answers and find and to notice the importance of talking to someone about it and trying to find some help. Oh, that's that's an interesting topic to to cover and very sensitive. When you say teenage homelessness, what age group are we talking about? Um, they, from the research that I had done, it's anywhere from age thirteen up to, you know, 18, 19, 20 and above. It's, yeah, it's a real problem. Well, sure, any, any, any age group can, be, or any aged person uh, can be homeless. Uh, but so this, this book in particular just kind of tackles that age group. And um, had you done anything like that before with such a, a big social issue in any of your novels? Uh, all of my young adult novels, I try to put in, some type of message to help young people navigate through life because life is hard and there are a lot of things that people as young adults and adults go through that are just difficult and the first young adult novel i wrote actually was because i met a young lady who had some physical disabilities and she really struggled with self-doubt and so Daisies in the Rain was actually my first young adult novel and was kind of written to show her how wonderful she is just the way that she is. And from there, it just took off. And I know at one point, Dare Accepted, which um, just actually won a Moonbeam Children's Award, bronze, <laughs> um, which was a very big honor to me, uh, deals with the subject of kids doing dares and videotaping them and then putting them on YouTube or putting them on social media to try to get attention or to get, you know, the likes and the comments and popularity and that type of thing. And it really um, hits on the subject of just what can really happen when you do things like that and care too much what other people think about you instead of accepting yourself for who you are. Oh, again, a very important uh, topic, I think, to cover, especially right now. And, um, you know, I think we all remember being back in those school days uh, and, um, you know, before we had a video around every corner of what we were doing, we were still doing silly, crazy 
dangerous things, especially boys. Um, and, and, and it's right, it's for acceptance, it's for dares, it's um, for, for all kinds of peer pressure. Uh, and now it's just been magnified uh, with this uh, stardom type of philosophy that some YouTubers have. Um, now, when I noticed in your reading of um, nothing but gutters and, and, and pocket change, um, there was a lot of emotion to your voice. And I, it felt like you were really connected to your characters in your reading. And I have to think, well, you've, you've wrote that, you've edited that, you've probably read it countless times, and, and it still affects you. It does. Um, those characters, well, all of my characters really come alive for me. Um, it was actually very hard for me to write that book. Um, because the characters were so alive for me and because as I was writing it, I was thinking about people who are actually going through those types of things. And see, I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> um, I did not have to go through anything like that um, in my life. And I'm very thankful for that. Uh, but it really, it really, touches my heart, it gets me right here to know that people and kids especially have to go through those types of things when their parents and the people around them are supposed to be protecting them and helping them and supporting them. It, it, it is incredibly difficult to, to wrap your, your mind and your emotions around. Um, you know, I have the same background in a sense that you do. I never had to worry about those things. You know, I, I had parents, I had a home. Um, it was never a struggle. I mean, we all have challenges in life, but I think when there are challenges that we have such a difficult time relating to, it seems so extreme to us. Yes. And uh, just that segment that you read really um, tells us about more than just homelessness, homelessness for teens. It tells us how they get there. Right. Yeah, there's, there's so many different avenues to how teenagers, well, anyone really, but teenagers especially get to that point of homelessness. And it's never, it's never a good road. It's never a good avenue. And uh, it's usually filled with a lot of hurt and heartbreak. And without giving anything away, I hope that there's some um, resolution, some um, some more positive uh, outcomes in the book. There are, yes. Um, I do try to keep it realistic. Um, I don't, uh, tip, I didn't tie it up with a big red bow. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't typically just because I do want to keep it realistic. And um, I actually had a teacher who read it, who made the comment. She's like, you know, I'm glad that you gave them hope that there is hope out there, but without just handing them everything to make everything okay. And so, yes, there is, it, it is a very intense subject matter, but there is a message of hope in it as well. Well, that's a very important, I think, you know, as humans, the human spirit is, is filled with hope um, and we have to always remember that, but life is also real and you don't let people forget that either in your book. Um, but I want to mention, you just had another book release, which is called, and I'm looking at my other screen, um, When Death Whispered Her Name, which sounds spooky to me. It just came out in, in the fall, maybe around Halloween. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, early October. Uh, it's part of a trilogy. It follows Caitlin O'Reilly, a private investigator, and uh, her story. So it starts with when darkness killed her and then moves to when vengeance reigned. And then the last book in the series is um, When Death Whispered Her Name. So she's the, the sleuth that uh, solves the, the mysteries? Yes. Yep. She, uh, the first one uh, doesn't necessarily end on a cliffhanger. It kind of leaves a little bit open. Um, but the, oh, I'm so sorry. That's my cat trying to drive <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. They're welcome. <laughs> 
Uh, the second, uh, when Vengeance Reign really ends on a, on a cliffhanger and kind of carries that story all the way through to the very end and, and the resolution. And is that um, a young adult as well, or is that more uh, an adult novel? Um, I wrote it for adults, but quite honestly, I young adults have read it as well, and it is definitely appropriate for young adults as well. Um, I typically don't write in a way that um, I would have to steer a certain age group away from it. So yeah, you know, young adults can read it as well as many adults have enjoyed them as well. Now, um, I also know that you're, uh, you're well-traveled, you've been uh, lots of places. How does that influence your writing? Does it uh, help with creating characters or place? Um, yeah, it really does. Um, I use everybody I meet and every place I go in some way or another in my writing. Um, people say, well, where do you get your story ideas? And I say, I walk down the street <laughs> and there's probably five different things that I can use uh, to help create a story. But um, yeah, especially uh, traveling overseas, I think one of the biggest things for me was just noticing that, like, especially with the children that I was teaching writing workshops for, they're just the same as those children in the United States. They were, they would get tired, they would get hungry, they would laugh, they would cry, they would create. Um, they were just like us. And it was like, just to have that reminder. So, so often, sometimes we might feel removed because we only see people in other countries like through TV or um, hear about it um, on social media. And it was just very interesting to me and fun for me to be able to just truly experience another culture uh, while teaching um, creative writing. And I think it's helped my writing quite a bit. And uh, what's your cat's name? Padme. <laughs> Padme. Yeah. So, so are you, a, a, is that a Star Wars fan? Uh, yeah, actually, when we adopted her from the shelter, uh, she came with that name, but we are all Star Wars fans here in this house. So yeah, we just were like, no, that, that works. We'll keep it. And so she's quite familiar, or he or she? She. she. Yeah. is quite familiar with um, hopping up on your desk as, as all cats are. Uh, does she influence your writing? Do you get ideas from those momentary feline breaks she offers you? Oh, I do. Yeah, she, I mean, not only um, in some ways, just the comfort that an animal can give you um, and, and the love that you can find there, but actually in Daisies in the Rain, uh, there was a, there's a scene with the cat, which is actually kind of funny. <laughs> Um, and like a, t a totally different aspect than the, than the love and the care of an animal, <laughs> um, because she was in a little bit of a fight with it. Um, but yes, I definitely draw on even Padme to help me. Uh, so what's next, which, which way are you going for your next novel, a thriller or mystery or a young adult for. I am actually currently writing the first draft for my next young adult novel. Um, it, it deals with the issue of depression and suicide. Um, I wasn't entirely sure I wanted to tackle something quite that in, intense, uh, but I had so many people approach me asking um, if I would write about it and that they struggled with some of those things themselves that I really felt like it needed to be, it needed to be explored. And so it, it is a, a balancing act I'm finding because it is such an intense subject of making sure that the way it's written is not so intense that people don't feel like they can read it, if that makes sense. <laughs> Um, I know sometimes when things are too intense, it's hard for people to, to read it um, or to get through it. And so I'm definitely trying to find that, that balance uh, to make sure that there's uh, some humor in it, uh, to make sure that the characters are relatable and um, lovable, even though it is such an intense subject to handle. And I am hoping that to uh, have that come out in September of 2021, because I know September is Suicide Awareness Month, and I'm hoping to kind of pair with uh, some other people to really kind of help 
get that message out and to bring more awareness to that. Well, I applaud you on, on tackling such serious issues in your writing and, and being able to uh, create a, a, an entertainment venue, yet being able to deliver a message uh, has got to be some tricky, crafty writing. It, it does take some thought. I've, um, there are many times when my husband has found me just staring off into space for quite a while and he knows to just turn around and walk right back out of the room because <laughs> I'm trying to think of something uh, or how to, to link something together in just the right way. I understand. It's, it's, uh, it's great to have you here on, on the Author Fair uh, this year. Um, let's leave it with uh, maybe a place, a website for people to go to find out more about you, D.A. Reed, the author, um, and maybe a place to buy your books. Sure. Um, I, my website is dareadauthor.com and all of my books have links up there. They're available on Amazon and also lulu.com. Um, they are available in some independent bookstores. They're more on the west side um, of the state here. Um, one up north, Tip in the Mitten and Grayling, Epilogue Books in Rockford, and uh, the Book Nook and Java Shop in Montague. Great. Well, thank you so much, uh, D.A. Reed, for, for joining us today on the Author Fair. And uh, I wish best success to you. And I can't wait uh, for more titles to come out. And maybe you'll be part of the third Author Fair next year. I would love to. Thanks for having me.